Hey guys, so in this tutorial, after you've made your faceted looking rock, uh, we're gonna learn how to waffle using this new geometry that we just created. So, just like anything, we're gonna examine the Rhino model and make sure if we're gonna split this in half, that it'll fit in one side of the box that you're gonna create for this, and it'll actually come out. So, on this particular rock that I made, I can see that in some spots this will come out and in some spots it won't. So we need to kind of find a line of separation so we can actually see within our draft that it's able to be removed from our waffle frame. So if I rotate it up, I know that through here it'll fit within a waffle and come right back out. So to make a bounding kind of surface that fits this volume perfectly, we're gonna type in bounding box into Rhino. What this is gonna do is make a box that's perfectly joined to the extremities of the rock we just created. And from here, what I typically do is I'm gonna, since we need to be, have an inch of border around every side of the rock, uh, I'm just gonna draw lines that kinda act as guides so we can start to scale this box and make it large enough for the requirements. So just drawing lines in the X, Y, and Z, we can take the, and select the box and type in scale 1D and if we start from our midpoint, it'll scale on both ends. And then if we take from the other midpoint in the Y direction, it'll scale. And then if we take from the Z direction, it'll scale. So let's just take away those lines for now. And now if we change our display settings really quick, we can kind of see that our box is kind of floating around the rock we just made. So next, I'm just gonna copy and paste this bounding box and rock over just to keep a little history of all the items we're creating and you could potentially use it for your fabrication drawings. And I'm going to split this rock in half using a plane. So if we go right click on our four point surface, hit vertical for my orientation, just create a plane that's larger than the box and the rock. You can scale it using your gumball and then select the box and the rock and type in split or hold control shift S Hit the plane, and you'll have a split division of the box and the rock. If we select one side and come out, we can see that it's split up. Now let's change the display settings on the box back again to shaded so we can actually get a visualization. So typically, this is what's going to happen. Nothing's capped on both sides, so let's just select everything, type in cap, C-A-P, and we're going to have something that looks like this. And now we're going to do a little Boolean difference. Um, so selecting our boxes and then right clicking on the union tool here and select Boolean difference and select our rocks. There we are. Kind of create a little geode within a box. Next comes the waffle strategy. I'm only going to do it to one half of this box since that's in the assignment for you guys. And I'm just going to take it and I'm going to rotate it so I can so you guys kind of a visual for how this waffle frame is constructed digitally. So selecting your rock box here, we're going to type in contour. First we're going to go from the X direction and for this, just for this basic tutorial, I'll just do a half inch increments. Kind of make them larger than probably you want to make them. I'll just move that over 10 inches again, try to keep the catalog and I'm going to join using Control-J, and I'm going to group them so I can just deselect them and select them all at once. Next, I'm going to contour in the other direction, the same distance. I'm just going to join and group those again and just move them over 10 inches so they line up together. There we are. This is kind of the outlines of what our waffle frames are going to be. So next, I'm just going to copy and paste these over and Push them over 10 inches again. And I'm going to separate them out just so we can get kind of a visual of what parts you're going to need for this. And I'm going to type in planar SRF surface, planar surface, and we're going to get some geometry out of here. So as you can see, your little contours through here, and in the opposite direction, you have the same. So the more contours you use, the higher resolution waffle you're going to make. So every one of these surfaces here, what I'm gonna do is just give it a little bit of thickness using my offset surface command. 
since I use quarter or half inch increments, I'll probably just make this an eighth of an inch thick and make sure it's solid. There we are. So make sure your, your offset here is the thickness of the material you're going to be using. So again, let's just group these together so we kind of keep a catalog. I'm just going to move this guy back to where it came from. And I'm going to copy them over once again. And now we're going to work on how we can digitally fabricate some notches so these fit together. So to do this, what I typically do is just select both and I copy them but don't paste. And usually you want to go half up and half down to create these notches. So select either the X direction contours or the Y. Here we'll just do the X. And you're just going to use them and type in move and then hit vertical up here. And if you have your snaps on, especially mid, what you can do is just move it up to the midpoint of the next contours. So as you can see here. And what we're going to do next is select the lower half and hit Boolean subtract and hit the one we just raised. As you can see here, that just gives us our notches that we're going to be using. So since you copied the last, what we're going to do here is just lock this down using Control L. And just using Control V or paste, we'll paste back what we had before. And since we notched out uh, the Y direction contours, we're going to leave the X where they were. And we're going to move these down to a halfway point, just like that. Next, we're going to just do the opposite or the inverse. Do Boolean difference and select the lower ones. There we are. Now, we can type in unlock. And as you can see here, especially through here, each one of these is notched to fit perfectly into its cross section. See how that works? So fabricating these is really easy because it has a guide on every single little side, even through the center. So as for cut sheets, basically you want to organize these. So we'll just copy these over. And you kind of want to organize them in X and Y. So what we'll do is just separate these guys out. Basically, let's just lock all these guys down so we don't get confused by keeping track of everything. Let's just move them over 10 again, get them out of that line. So basically what I like to do for this step is just make sure they're sitting flat up like this. And this one would need to be rotated in two directions. Just so they're sitting in the same orientation along each other, but you need to keep these organized. So what I typically do is just make two different kind of cut sheets. So if we're cutting on the laser, for instance, we're going to use 18 by 32 inches, which is right there. So I'm going to use that for my X, and I'm going to use the next one for my Y. And you need to just kind of keep a little catalog of all that. And what I typically do is just kind of move them over into place. And basically, it's from the same exercise as before. Basically, we're just going to start to orient all of these after you ungroup them into a cut sheet formation, getting them as close as can be so there's not a lot of wasted material. And we nest them all together. This could take a little while dependent on how detailed you got your waffle the first time. So if you didn't use half inch or you used eighth inch, for instance, which is really, really dense for these rocks, um, this could take a little teeny bit longer than what you think. Number two on group. So you're not just selecting them all and wasting your time. You just kind of keep sliding them over into your cut sheets. So now 
we can unlock these again. And since we have our cut sheets for our X and our Y here, what we can do now is basically just make 2D, and that'll kind of delete some duplicate lines for you. And set up your colors for the laser cutter, for instance, or if you're doing a, a printed out version, and you're ready to go. And all you need to do after this is just export to AutoCAD and assemble. So this is really helpful, especially for digital fabrication or printing. If you were to use scissors or a cutting tool, you probably would never have this big of a notch. You would just make it for however big your blade is, which is pretty much paper thin. And uh, just try to keep track of every single one of these because they do fit in a particular fashion and uh, make sure your rock fits.